Aging is coming, whether we like it or not. Gray hair and wrinkles included. Not to mention all those age-related diseases like heart disease, Look, aging sucks and it's overwhelming. But do you know how it happens and why it occurs? As far as we know, aging is mainly caused by senescence. In 1961, Leonard Hayflick discovered that normal cells don't divide forever. He found that each type of cell divided for a set number of times and then never divided again. He called this termination of division senescence. Senescence can be caused by something called telomere erosion. On the ends of our chromosomes, we have non-coding sequences of DNA called telomeres. Picture the chromosome as a shoelace and the telomeres as shoelace caps. When a cell divides, the ends of the chromosome can't be copied completely. This means the shoelace caps get slightly shorter every division. If division continues after the ends erode, the shoelace will shrink, cutting off valuable segments of DNA. To prevent this, policing proteins step in when telomeres get short and halt cellular division. But what are the other effects of senescence? Normally, about 30 mutations happen every division, and harmful mutations would add up if the cell duplicated forever. Thus, by halting division, senescence prevents mutations. If a cell can't divide, it can't build up potentially cancer-causing mutations. So, in one way, senescence prevents cancer. Wait, what does this have to do with aging? Don't worry, this is where senescence gets really exciting. Senescence causes aging through a group of proteins called the SASP. The SASP usually recruits the immune system to clear senescent cells, but as the immune system ages, senescent cells aren't cleared as well and they accumulate. The SASP also causes inflammation through the release of proteins called cytokines. This effect of the SASP multiplies as more cells accumulate and the resulting chronic inflammation begins to take its toll. Chronic inflammation significantly raises the risk of age-related disease, the most prominent one of all, cancer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't you say senescence prevented cancer? This apparent paradox is what makes senescence so interesting. How can senescence both cause and prevent cancer? As with many problems in biology, we turn to our old friend, evolution. Early in life, senescence prevents early onset cancer and sends inflammatory signals that promote tissue repair. Later on in life, accumulation occurs and chronic inflammation causes disease. This concept, where a trait is beneficial early in life but detrimental later on, is called antagonistic pleiotropy. Evolution cannot select these traits out because they only harm us after we have already passed on our genes. Evolution doesn't produce the perfect option, it selects the best option available. Senescence shows that there are evolutionary trade-offs to traits and that senescence is a double-edged sword, both preventing cancer early in life and causing disease as we age. It serves as an example that in the world of biology, there is no free lunch.